glad we're here today because I have one of my friends, Ani, from Vanity Makeup. You guys all know her from my Instagram and from her Instagram. She has been doing a lot of awesome celebrities here in L.A., and we finally got to meet, and we totally have like the same style, and I love the crazy smoky eyes, and she loves that too, and she looks so good with it. So I thought, you know what? How awesome would it be to have her on the show as a special guest appearance and be my model so I can kind of have fun with her? So anyway, I just wanted to give a little background on uh, why I chose her and why I'm so excited for today. You guys saw my crazy post today. I blew up Instagram because I was so damn excited so thank you so much for being here if you guys are new to those of you who are new who just signed up this is dress your face live this is where magic goes down several times a month I get to share with you all my little tips and secrets on the best makeup applications and the best makeup techniques that I have to offer for you guys and it's such an affordable rate tuition at a makeup school is thousands and thousands of dollars and it's a huge group and sometimes a lot of your questions go unanswered and yada, yada, yada. But I decided in addition to teaching my uh, private students at home, I wanted to be able to reach a wider audience for those of you who aren't able to take my, my uh, private classes or aren't able to come to my seminars or maybe just don't have the funds to spend all this money on school. So why not give it to you with a great rate of $19 a month, or if you're a trial member, $7 for seven days just to try it out, see if you like it. And it's pretty awesome because this is the same kind of stuff that we teach at my seminars, and the one-on-one -on -one classes, the two-on-one -on -one classes, all that good stuff, but you get it at the fraction of the cost, and you get to see it on several different models, because every time I come on the show, I bring a new model, we have a new face shape, a new eye shape to work with, new techniques to work with, and all that really cool stuff. So it's a great opportunity to learn some of my favorite techniques and things that I'm known for, so that you guys can incorporate some of the new techniques into your work. Um, whether you're doing it on yourself or on clients, if you are an aspiring MUA or if you're just um, someone who likes to wear makeup once in a while and wants to learn some easier ways to apply it, this is where it's at. This is where I teach everything and I'm honored to be able to call myself uh, your teacher and your guru or whatever you want to call me and it's, it's I mean really it's been an honor like I'm truly truly happy being here and I'm truly happy having you guys uh, give me your feedback on my page um, every time I do a class I love hearing your comments and seeing what you have to say about your favorite parts of class um, usually I have giveaways going on and I wanted to also let you know about the last couple of giveaways that I had going on that I extended because I know I got a lot of um, entries for that, um, but I'll talk about that in a second. Um, but when you are watching this class, just for those of you who are new and don't know kind of how it goes, um, I'm going to be teaching you guys step by step every single thing from beginning to end on the makeup look that we're going over. So today's makeup look on Vanity Makeup on Instagram um, is going to be this gorgeous smoky eye that we've been posting all day today. It is um, incorporating a little bit of blue, some color. It is a very, very mysterious, sexy, sultry look that is very wearable when you're incorporating a little bit of color. So I wanted to finally go over something not so neutral anymore. I want to incorporate some more color into my tutorial so that you guys can kind of grow along with us. Um, and then as well as, okay, so if you guys are new, I'm sorry, if you guys are like regular members, you guys already know this stuff, but if you guys are new also, make sure that you watch this class completely before you start trying it on other people. So um, take your notes, like use this live time to take your notes if this is the first time you're watching this. Take your notes, make sure you take screenshots throughout the whole process, all the steps. I really want you guys to remember this because Obviously, like as your teacher, I want to monitor your progress. I want to make sure you guys are understanding what I'm teaching. It is the greatest honor and the greatest uh, measure of success as a teacher to be able to see that you've passed on your knowledge successfully to your students. So I want to make sure you guys are understanding everything. So make sure you guys take your screenshots throughout this class, all the steps, write down everything I'm telling you if it's not something that you've heard before. Um, and then the second time you watch this class, when you watch the recording of it on your own time, you'll 
you'll have like a good week to keep watching it over and over again. Then I would recommend you bringing a model or your friend or your sister or whatever and having her sit down and you can play the class in the background and kind of go along with me step by step. And that's kind of how I recommend you guys learning while I'm teaching over here. So the first time you watch a video, make sure you get all your notes, take all your screenshots, save them on your phone, whatever. Um, and then the second, third, whatever times that you watch the class to really perfect the looks, that's when I really want you to do the hands-on practicing, okay? So, uh, back to the giveaway thing. So I had a few giveaways going on. Um, two of them were sponsored by Gerard Cosmetics. One of them was sponsored by Da Vinci Design. They make the most beautiful Swarovski crystal headpieces and jewelry for my brides. And the bridal class that I had with Griselda last month, all three um, prizes were being given away to special um, members who have entered the giveaway. So if you guys entered the giveaway, or if you haven't yet, if you're all access members, you can still see the Griselda bridal class. Um, take your pictures and go ahead and upload them to enter the giveaway. Uh, I have the flyer posted on my Instagram page. It's not too late to enter, but later tonight I am going to choose the winners. So it's finally going to be over and then we'll introduce the next giveaway. These giveaways are only for my members as a special thank you from me to you. Now, another special thing that we had going on, remember my alopecia class that I had with um, my friend Rachel? She came in and I did this whole like crazy look. It was so fun and awesome and I really appreciate your support, by the way, for that one. Um, we introduced a tipping system on the site. So as you know, a lot of the costs incurred in running an online makeup school goes right to um, you know, paying the models and all of our customer service and of course taxes take half of it. But anyway, just so you guys know, there is a tipping option so that our team can get a little extra love from you guys. So if you do uh, see the tipping option on the members pages, that is a way for you guys to get even more love from me in return. So you guys are able to tip the artist, tip the model, tip whoever is involved with these videos just to give them a little something to take home. And in addition, what I'll be doing is announcing the top five tippers of every single class and doing a special thank you on the next post on Instagram. So after every live class, we'll be announcing the top five tippers um, on an Instagram post. So you guys get shout outs in return. So go ahead and if there's anything that you'd like me to shout out, whether it's your business or your own page or whatever it is, you can leave your tips on the tipping tab of the members pages and the top five tippers will get their shout out, but what you have to do is you have to let us know what your Instagram name is or what Instagram name you want me to shout out um, to my 1.5 million followers. And that way, uh, so basically once we announce who the five are over here online, your job is to email customer service with your username, the, the email that you use to log in, email the customer service and let us know what name you want me to shout out and I will make sure I shout out your name correctly or your business name correctly so we can give you guys some followers back in return and some extra love. So thank you guys for listening to my little updates in the beginning of every class. I like to do this little thing. And without further ado, I would love to introduce my gorgeous model of the day today. Her name is Ani and her Instagram page is Vanity Makeup. Please welcome Miss Vanity Makeup. Woo! Thank you. Hi. Hello. Thank you for having me, guys. Thank you for being Super here. Super excited. I know. I'm so excited, too. So you guys saw all of our posts today. You guys saw the before and after and how awesome it was. Now, here's the thing. This girl is really, really cute before already, so it's kind of like not so much work, but there are, of course, some special techniques that we wanted to show you, some things that she does on herself, some things that I did on her last time when I did her makeup, and I'm so glad that you guys liked it, and it was a little twist to something different from what we're used to on this show, so we're very excited to show it to you. Now, on my latest post on Instagram, I'll show you what it is, it's our um, behind the scenes picture this post right here I want you guys to ask us any questions you have in the Q&A so if there's specific questions about makeup or hair or anything you can ask me I'll answer at the end of class 
And in addition, if there's any questions you have for Ani, go ahead and address them to her so we can make sure she can help answer those questions before we say bye at the end of class, okay? So write down your questions on the Q&A section, which is going to be my latest post on Instagram. So don't forget, and we will be answering those after class. Perfect. Yes! All right, so um, first things first, we are going to do the whole face and then we're gonna do the eyes. Now, I know a lot of people do eyes first, then face, or <laughs> or they'll do like most of the eye and then do the face and then finish off the bottom Not of the really eyeliner that. and kind of make it perfect. Um, there's no right and there's no wrong. Whatever works for you, I highly encourage that you do what you feel comfortable with. I would never wanna take you completely out of your comfort zone, but just because this is how I learned and this is just how I've been used to. I've always done face first and then eyes. And if you're worried about fallout and things like that, you can always use shadow shields or just be a little bit more careful with your application. I want you to pay attention to the way I'm applying her makeup. I want you to pay attention to the way I'm holding the brush and all that stuff. And I will of course be explaining every little item that I'm using on her as well as the pressure and all that stuff, the things that you can't really see from where you're standing, okay? So if you have any questions throughout, if there's any issues that you have with lighting, if you want us to brighten up or close up or whatever, we are gonna zoom in for most of the class. But if you have any specific like requirement questions, go ahead and ask them on that. Uh, post of mine as well. My team is going to be monitoring the questions. So if there's anything you want them to change about the lighting or the positioning, just ask. We'll, we're here. We're here for you. So we're going to take care of it. Okay. So let's get started. So we're going to go ahead and zoom in a little bit just to make sure we get full face. And if I need to talk to you, I can always squeeze into the frame. I think I'm finally going to learn how to do face first. Oh, yeah? I tried it. Just, yeah. It just doesn't work out for me. I've you know, tried it's and a, I've it's tried. It's a preference thing. Yeah, you know? I think it's just what you're used to. Yeah, I've always done sure. eyes first. It's definitely what we're used to. So I'm going to start off by applying... Um, do you already Is have my hair like a little okay? bit? Should I get it out of the way or you're fine? Mm, it's okay. You're okay. Yeah. okay. I have a little clip, actually. I could just get the side of your bangs out. Okay. But, um, I think it'll be alright actually. I think it's okay. Yeah? Yeah. It's fine. Oh, is it <laughs> No? Let me just do a little bit. Alright. Okay. Okay. Cool. Are we good? Are we good? We're gonna go ahead and apply some primer on her face. I usually like um, just some MAC prep and prime, nothing crazy, nothing too serious. I just like a basic, nice, good primer. Um, do you feel oily today or is it yeah, a, a little bit on the oily side? Yeah. Okay. Because so. I got a chemical peel yesterday. Oh, lovely. Yeah. <laughs> I did a fruit acid peel, so my skin is not peeling. I told her, make sure my skin doesn't peel so she doesn't have difficulties. Thank you. Video. Thank <laughs> you. I tell my brides, like, when we're doing... Um, Bridal makeup. I let my brides know not to do anything crazy, but yeah, as long as like your skin's dramatic. not feeling, you're fine. Yeah, that's all good. All right. So this is just the Mac Prep and Prime, no SPF, no shimmer, just something very basic to go all over. And I usually do ask my clients, just like I asked her, how her skin's feeling these days. Um, just in case it's a little oily than normal or if it's a little drier than normal, I like to make sure that I'm putting something appropriate on her skin. Now, if she said that her skin was dry, I would have applied this still, but I would have also applied a little bit of the Hourglass Serum number 28, which is really hydrating for super, super dry skin. I really love that stuff. Oh, I should buy that. Oh my god, it's amazing. I have really dry skin to the point where it peels. Oh, really? So yeah, I like to I use that. that for sure. A lot of my clients have that issue. Oh, yeah. You'll love that. Really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I just recently started using it because one of my students was um, using it in her kit. Uh -huh. And she brought it. And I was like, what the heck is this? And I tried it. And it felt like I love when that happens I'd sometimes for my hands-on classes. I, I discover all these cool products I never knew about. I, us I, I usually that. use the Smashbox Hydrating, the blue one. Oh, yeah, that's good, too. Yeah, but yeah, it's, not, really it's not that, you know, it's not, not that, that amazing. Yeah, it's not that amazing. <laughs> Oh, so you'll definitely love the Hourglass. It's actually truly, like, I was shocked. Really? Yeah. Because I don't like their foundation, that's why. 
Yeah, they're, I've never tried their foundation or anything else. That's the only item that I've ever tried from Hourglass oh, okay. is the hydrating serum. And I love it. So now I'm putting on, this is uh, the Benefit Professional. It's a small layer I'm just putting on just to make sure her skin's nice and smooth throughout this whole process of makeup application. I already feel like a foundation. It's amazing. It blurs the skin. It completely. It's so even, cool. Even my skin out. Yes. So that was, let me show you guys. That was these two products. We got the Benefit Professional, a little layer of that over the MAC Prep and Prime. That's all. And now we're ready for the foundation. Yay. So I'm going to be using, I would say the Pro Longwear. I'm going to do Pro Longwear NC25. It's a little bit darker than her natural skin tone, but we are going to bronze her up a bit. So, and we will re-brighten her highlighted areas. So what I'm doing is I'm applying it with my Morphe brush. Oh, wow. I totally wiped off the name of it. Morphe M427. <laughs> that shows how much I use yeah, it. Yeah, that always happens. Sometimes during my classes, I give a seminar, and then I'm trying to give the name of the brush. I'm like, uh oh. Oh, that happens to me all the time. <laughs> my MAC ones, too, like yeah. totally rubbed off to the point where you don't even see the indentation anymore. <laughs> we, use we are rough. We are rough yes. artists. All right, so as you can see, what I'm doing is I'm stippling it into the skin. I want a very, very smooth application, so I like to make sure I'm actually pushing it right into the pores. Not that she has major pores or anything, but I like to make sure that I'm pushing it right into the skin for a very, very flawless application. It's also going to help keep it on more long-lasting and more flawless because what you're doing is you're pushing all the product from your brush to the skin instead of wiping it off. So none of that buffing stuff, you want to just push it in, stamp it on, and that way you're not wasting product going back right into the brush. And you're not wiping anything off, you know, um, removing all your hard work. So we're just stippling it on until I see that it's starting to cover really well. And don't ever use it like a paintbrush where it's like um, big, big globs of product because then you're going to take a really long time trying to blend it all out. But if you have a beauty blender, that's going to be fine because it'll absorb some of the excess product. So you should be okay. But um, I usually don't use a beauty blender just because I'm, I'm pretty old school with my brushes. I like to use my tools and move things around. I like your technique. It's working nice on you. Mm -hmm. And then whatever's left on the brush, I just kind of bring it down to the exposed areas of the body. Nothing crazy, no gloves, okay? Mm -hmm. So now that her skin is looking much more even, we're gonna go into concealer under her eyes, and I use the Pro Longwear as well. Uh, same color, the 25. So I'm gonna whip that out and the, um, the brush that I'm going to use is a small uh, concealer brush from MAC, but a lot of other companies carry the same thing, uh, MAC 287. This one here, if you can see, look up to the seal. This is my favorite part. I love it. As long as my under eyes are concealed, I'm fine. <laughs> Don't we all feel that way? Yeah, even if I don't put foundation, sometimes I'll just cover my dark circles and go. And that's the best way. Like, I do that when I'm teaching. I teach mm -hmm. early in the morning. I hate doing my makeup, so I'll just put on concealer yeah, just and then so you powder don't all tired. over. Yeah. And then it's all good. Like, you look fresh and yeah. normal. And what I'm doing right now is I'm using the brush flatly so I can set it and let it dry while I'm applying it. So I just pat it until it dries. That way it's not going to crease as badly as it would have if I would have put globs on her and then tried to pat it. So one application and just pat it, pat it, pat it until it dries. Pat, 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 pat. Make sure you're not jabbing her eyes going straight <laughs> in with the brush. You want to use it flat. That way it's not going to hurt her. She's not going to cry. We don't want <laughs> no tears during this process, please. Uh -huh. 
And then whatever's left on the brush, I'm just kind of going around the nostrils a little bit and making sure everything else is looking nice and even. So around the um, mouth as well, sometimes I just give a little bit extra uh, product there. So now the base is on, oh, sorry, the primer's on, the foundation's on, the concealer's on. Now the fun part, we're going to do highlight and contour. Yay! Woo! Favorite part. I know. <laughs> okay, so what we're going to use is the LA Girl Pro Conceal in Creamy Beige and Beautiful Bronze. I love these little babies because I can actually, I don't have to use a brush with it. Um, I just draw them on and you clean them in between clients with a regular brush cleaner because it is going to kill all the bacteria anyway. Um, and then, of course, it does dry fast, so you want to be able to blend it pretty quickly. But for the sake of this video, I'm not going to blend it that fast. I want to make sure you guys understand what I'm doing. But basically, these are like a couple bucks each. They're so affordable and easy to find. You can find them um, on their website, ellegirlusa.com, uh, LA or you can find it at Morphe Brushes in Burbank. Um, and I believe Morphe Brushes online would also be carrying this too. So, LA Girl Cosmetics. So, I'm going to start off with the creamy beige i'm going to put some on the back of my hand i'm just going to squeeze a little bit out here on the back of my hands and that way i can use my hand as my palette and control how much i'm putting on her instead of squeezing it directly on her face then globs will come out so i don't want that to happen i just want to make sure that i'm controlling how much i'm applying on her so i use my hand for that now i'm going to draw a line from her tear duct area down to the corner of her mouth. And I'm also gonna draw a line up to the top of her cheekbone. And then under her eye, and I'm gonna go ahead and fill this in. So now we have a little bit of a triangle situation going on. <laughs> Same thing on the other side, make sure you fill it in. It does not have to be perfect, it just has to be in the right zone. Because remember, all this is going to be blended in. So I don't really care about those fancy, fancy lines. I just want to get it on and move on. Now center the forehead. I'm going to match it from arch to arch and then fan it out, same width. So now we have con uh, highlighted the center of the forehead just to give it a rounded effect. And we get a little bit more product out. And we're gonna follow the center line all the way down to the tip of her nose. It's just one skinny line all the way down to the tip of the nose. I like to also highlight the Cupid's bow. And a little bit around the nostril too, just to kind of puff it out. And then, <laughs> And then lastly, we're going to highlight the chin just to give it a little bit more definition there. I need more chin. I like chin. Yeah, me too. Not major chin. Yeah. But just a little feminine chin. I can use a little more chin. <laughs> now we're going to go with beautiful bronze. We're going to do the same thing. Squeeze a little product out on the back of the hand and use it as your palette. So if I can have you face a little bit here. Yeah. We're going to go in from the top of the ear, as if there's a ruler from the top of the ear to the corner of the mouth, I'm going to follow that line and I'm going to let it disappear before it hits her like laugh area. And I want to go a little bit thicker and darker on the top and let that line disappear as it goes down. I'm also going to give a little bit of chiseling on her jawbone right here and I'm going to dip it under her chin. I don't want to remove chin. So I'm going to go under her chin over here, but we're just going to chisel this part out. And I like to contour the side, the temple area. So basically the front half of the brow is highlighted, the back half of the brow is contoured and that creates that rounded shape on the forehead. And we're going to do a little bit on the hairline as well. So we'll do the same on the other side. Thank you. You're welcome. Going a little thicker on the outer portion, going thinner as you're going in. Right back here. Hairline and temple zone. Now we're going to do the T zone. Basically the nose. Yay. Yay. 
the so nose. with the nose, there's a lot of different ways you can contour the nose. It, I guess it depends on how long you want it to look or how sharp you want it to look. Now, I'm super, super into a Barbie nose. Like, that's just, yeah. <laughs> I like to go as skinny as possible. I like that little button tip. And I like everything else to be super bright so that all you see is, like, sharp here. So that's what we're going to do today. But if you don't want to go too crazy, then just use powders. You don't have to use a cream or blend it out a little bit more and you don't have to make it so sharp the way we're about to do it. So what we're doing today in class is super, super glam. I will make sure I do a class in the future on a much more softer way to do makeup, more office appropriate, more school appropriate for your youngsters out there. And um, that will be in the near future. But for now, we're going to go glam. Because that's how we like it. Yes. <laughs> it's all about having fun. It's not about, let me just, disclaimer. <laughs> disclaimer. It is not about low self-esteem. And I've said it before in my other videos, but if you're new here, I just want you to know this too. It is not about low self-esteem. It's not about wanting to change ourselves and not loving ourselves for who we are and what we look like for real. It is about having fun and being able to transform into a new person when we want to. It's playing dress up. It's playing with lipstick. Makeup is not meant to be that serious, although it is an art, and we can create full-on occupations out of it, which is what we're doing, but truly, truly, it's just about having fun. And in special occasions, sometimes we want to look extra Extra amazing. glam. Yeah, exactly. And there's no harm about that. And that's that. why you picked me, right, Tamana? That's why I picked you. would you. never pick me for an office look, would you? No. No, it's just not me. No. <laughs> I mean, have you seen her page? <laughs> we're kind of meant to be for this yeah, particular class. Yeah, yeah, we're meant so. to be friends. Yeah. <laughs> okay, cool. Glad you go that way. So we're going to dip in under the brow and connect it to the um, highlight portion of the nose. So I'm going to just scoop it in. And we're just hugging up right up against that highlight. Now I'm going to go straight down in a line. Okay, straight down in a line. We don't want to go super, super wide. We want to make sure we're kind of sitting on top of the nose rather than on the side of the nose. And we're just hugging up right up against the highlight line. Now, it's up to you if you want to do, if you want to go all the way down and connect, or if you want to just break it above the tip to shorten the nose. So if you want the nose to go a little shorter, you're going to break it a little sooner. If you want the nose to continue on, you're going to break it below. So one way to do it is to go and break it right in here, and then make another break a little bit higher just to create a little bit of that refinement of the tip. It makes the tip look sharper and it doesn't make it look like it's hanging low. It kind of keeps it upturned and sharp. So that's kind of how we're going to fake it. A little square right there. Now I like to exaggerate the cupid's bow so I do like to add a little bit of dark right in there. And lastly a little bit right on the lower part of the um, bottom lip. And what this is going to do is it just basically gives the lips a pouty look, which she already has. We don't have to do too much, but I just like to shade it in a little bit just so it doesn't look flat again after all the makeup is on. So really the contour and highlight is about creating a three-dimensional face, no flat face, no one color. It's beyond that. This is 2015. It's all about contour. So you go next. So that's the map. If you want to do a little side-to-side -side posing so that they can get their screenshots, go ahead and take your screenshots on your phone if you're watching this from your phone. Uh, if you're watching it on your computer, take pictures of your computer. Make sure you have this down. Go side-to-side. -side. Make sure you're getting good angles. I want you guys to perfect this. I want you to try it at home, and I want you to tag me so I can make sure that you're doing it right, and I can show you guys some love by liking your pictures because... It's a give and take relationship. All right, cool. Good. Now we are ready to blend. So I'm going to use my 130 brush from MAC to start blending all the light portions first by just pushing it into the foundation layer. So all I'm doing is pushing it in. You can definitely do this with a beauty blender as well. But again, I love brushes. 
She's old school. I am old school. <laughs> and I'm just going to push it in. Make sure you can't see any of the edges. All looking good. Smooth it down. There's going to be no rubbing, no wiping. It's just letting it melt. Very nice. Okay. So now that the highlight is done, we're going to do the nose with a different brush, by the way. So I'm just ignoring the nose for now. Now I'm going to use my little towel to wipe off my brush. And we are going to do the same thing with the contour zone. So we're going to push it in and let it start to melt into the foundation. If there's any areas that have dried really quickly and you're just unable to blend it, use your fingers. I love using the fingers because of the warmth that it offers. So you can get the product to wipe right off or to blend right in. Check that out. That's crazy. Mm -hmm. Already. I already have cheekbones. Yes. And we're just going to use our fingers a little bit to blend that tip. Okay. And we're going to do the same thing on the jawline, except for the jawline. I really don't want that brown line to show like that. So I'm going to do a little extra blending on the jawline. Have you ever tried spraying your um, brush with like the fix spray or like rose water just to hydrate it? Really helps blending. Too. Yeah, yeah. If your if it's uh, like product too is dry, dry yeah, yeah, it really helps. Absolutely. Sometimes even your fingers don't. Mac has a um, charge water, which also oh yeah, helps. charge water. Yeah. yeah, I've tried that too. So check it out. We have a beautiful sculpted Ooh. cheekbone. We have a nice sculpted jawline. And we're going to do the same thing for the temple zone. We're just going to blend this in. Just make sure you don't see the lines. Like that's the whole po um, point. It's to create shadow, but not to show those lines. So I love to go over with my fingertips, the warmth of my fingertips, just to get it to just look like a shadow. So now you see mm -hmm. what I mean by that rounded look on the forehead. It just has a beautiful like shape to it. So we're going to turn this way and do the same thing on the other side. Yep. We're just going to push it in. And if you learn how to do this correctly, there's no need for plastic surgery, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Although I love plastic surgery. I know. I'm so tempted to do so many things. Cheekbones? I I'm wanna... always tempted to yeah? do cheekbones. Yeah. Nah, that's so but easy the, with contour. The only bad thing is it makes your face look too wide. If it's not that Because oh. it kind of might make you look swollen. Don't do it. Just do contour. Yeah. <laughs> contour all the way. I'm tempted to get injections right here. Like, I want to do injections right here. To but then that, that makes you sometimes look like... like monkey? Uh, mm -hmm. See, I'm scared of the monkey thing. Yeah. But I'm really... Okay, guys. If you guys have had injections done here, I want to know your feedback. Because I'm, like, really, really, really tempted to do this. this. Okay. I've done it. Twice. Did you like it? No, I Not feel so like um, it just makes me look like that. And I, I feel weird in pictures. So then I I usually can't wait until it goes away. So dang. I mean, unless you really need it. Okay, so I have. <laughs> but I don't think you I do. have. I really. I laugh way too much. <laughs> I also talk way too much. So I have these like permanent. You should try a little bit just to see how you like yeah, it. Yeah, I think don't I want to try that. Don't go all out. Yeah. But basically, when I'm an old lady, I want to look like a Barbie. Oh yeah, like an old lady Barbie. Definitely, me too. <laughs> For sure. Uh, I'm loving it so far. Me too. Make sure just you're just pushing it in. Blended. See, this baby is like my eraser. Like, it just does it. Actually, the Morphe has a dupe M438. It's oh, yeah. Same exact thing. Yeah, I love yeah, Morphe. Yeah, that's the one I used to. This is the same one I used to blend out my contour, too. I love Morphe. Yeah really good quality and great price all right in fact if you guys want to try morphe i'm going to go ahead and ask them if they would like to be the sponsor of our, uh, sponsors of our next giveaway because i really there's a whole set of morphe brushes the flawless collection that i love it's the 
tapered the tapered ones. really long ones oh my god we're about to use that in the next steps so Those i'm gonna amazing. contact them and see if they're able to give us a whole set to give away to one of you guys so all you have to do to enter would be to take a picture of something going on in this class just to show that you're a member put it up on your instagram pages hashtag dress your face live so we can see all your entries and then we'll pick a winner but i'll go ahead and also make a flyer in case you miss this I'll make a flyer so that you guys on Instagram can see. I think that'll be really fun. I really want you guys to try the Morphe ones. They're amazing. All right. So now that the face is blended, we're going to start on the nose. And we're going to go back to the same concealer brush that I used before, which Morphe also has a dupe for. This one here. And we're going to start scooping all the contour lines. I feel photoshopped already. Yeah. That's the thing. It looks like real life yeah, Photoshop. Photoshop. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just kind of wiping down. I am not spreading it to the side of the nose. I'm just wiping up and down to remove some of the color. And I can use my fingers to then soften it even more. And don't forget that Cupid's bow. And do not forget the lower lip. Okay. So, this is the blended contour. It has not been set with powders yet. This next step is going to make it, oh my god, like 10 times more. <laughs> so, as if you guys thought that this was like already glam, no. This to us is natural. Yeah. Oh, this is natural makeup. Yeah. It's gonna get more intense. It's gonna go crazy now. So now I'm whipping out three powder shades. I'm gonna whip out a light color powder for her light zones just to set it. I'm gonna whip out a darker color powder for her darker zones and then I'm gonna whip out a medium color powder for the in-between zones just to like blend and all that good stuff. And then we're gonna use the Anastasia Contour Kit to really go crazy. So there's three levels of crazy. This is the first level, the powder is the second level and the Anastasia Contour Kit is the final level. Actually, it's not even final. That's just the third level. Right, and then there's bronzers, and then there's and and highlighters, <laughs> all of the above. Yeah. Uh, let's see which brush I'm gonna use. Okay, the one I used on you last time, the Morphe 407 brush. It's like a little ball brush. I'm using it with the Mac Studio Fix powder in NC25, and I'm gonna use this to set all of her highlight zones and I'm going to set it pretty heavily. For us, it's really going to be about creating a very, very flawless full coverage face. And I'm pushing it in and I'm going to just complete that triangle. Just by pushing it and I'm doing it in layers. As you can see, I just keep putting on layer after layer. And with this particular, it doesn't work with every powder, guys. With this particular powder, it does work, but you guys are going to have to, like, test your powders and see if it works for you at all. I've tested a lot of powders. Some work, some just didn't. Of course, it also matters what the skin type is and all that stuff, but for me, Studio Fix Powder from MAC is just my go-to. It just looks super flawless on it's everyone. It's so smooth. <laughs> And the more you put on, the smoother it looks. It's crazy. Yeah. Other powders, the more you put on, the cakier it looks or the drier it looks. So you really have to play with your powders and see if it will work or not. You'll only know if you try. Who do you think of setting with loose powder? Um, I've tried loose powders, but I only like loose powders if it's a full coverage loose powder. Mm -hmm. Like, like a, almost like a loose powder foundation, mm -hmm. like a mineral mm -hmm. powder. Yeah. But then, when it comes to loose powders, I'm pretty messy. Yeah. So, this is I kind of like the compact thing. Yeah. Make sure you really get under the eyes. That's going to prevent creasing later on. Now, a very common question I get from my students is, well, do you do all this on a mature skin? The answer is no. Unless she doesn't have a whole lot of wrinkles, then I can go nuts. But if your mature client is dry and has wrinkles and maybe mother of the bride situation, I don't go this heavy on them. In fact, on really older women, 
I don't even do a cream contour. I just focus on one color foundation, a little bit of powder, and then I bronze them up in areas, but I don't do the full contouring thing because I don't want them to look harsh. The point is, the older you look, sometimes the heart, the, your cheeks go very hollow, or um, you know, the, the harshness of the face starts to show through when you're wearing a lot of makeup. So the point with mature skin is to make you look fresher and younger, and you know, feel like look the way you feel inside. You know, so if you want to have that more awake, youthful look then piling on cakes of makeup is not going to give that to you when you have mature skin. What you need is something a lot lighter, something more fresh, not so contoured, not so dark. Mm -hmm. uh, I like dark lipstick uh, on, on older women, I, like wine colors. I think I it's very nice. I feel like it just nice. gives them color and Yeah, use. pinks and things like mm -hmm. that are very nice uh, berries. But when it comes to the eyes and the face, um, I don't like to go too, too heavy unless you're looking at a glam mom. Like I have a lot of glam moms, like especially Middle Eastern moms who love makeup and they're able to carry a smoky eye as long as it's not too wrinkly. So if your eyes are smooth enough, then yeah, go for it. You'll be fine. Use matte shades. Don't use too much shimmer. Um, but I mean, it's every situation is a little bit different. So you want to ask the mother of the bride or whoever you're doing or your mom or whatever or yourself you know are you a glam girl or are you just trying to look sophisticated and fresh and that's your answer based on what they say you're going to know whether to go heavier or lighter but usually i like to go a little bit lighter okay we're going to get this uh highlighted area of the forehead done we're going to get the chin done And very carefully, we're going to stamp on the bridge of the nose. And I'm just doing it sideways so I can make sure my bristles don't spread open or anything. Okay, so now we have this lovely mattified, fake looking face. <laughs> Now we're going to go into NC42 powder for the contour zone. And I'm going to use my Morphe brush like I used on her last time, 438. It's this lovely tapered brush, which I want to see if I can give away to you guys, along with the whole set of other tapered brushes that they have. And we're just going to lightly go ahead and set her contour zones with this. Making sure I get a little bit on the temple zone, a little bit on here. I love to bronze my clients with the darker shade too, so I'm gonna bring it down to the neck as well. Bring it down here. We're going to get the other side. Kind of give it a nice soft rub if you want to blend. Go down here and the temple zone. Okay. And you can do the side of the nose as well. Um, I don't like to do too much because I don't want two very, very brown lines. So what I'm going to do is actually put a medium tone on the side of her nose just to soften it up. But I am going to add just a little bit of this dark first just to set it. I'm going to go in here and in here. Okay, now we're ready for the medium. The medium color we're going to use is actually 40 from MAC. It's also Studio Fix. All of these are Studio Fix powders. And I'm going to go in with my 109 brush from MAC for this, which is a huge ball brush. And I'm going to apply the medium tone now on the areas that I haven't set yet. So this area between the jawline and the contour line of the cheek has not been set yet. So now I can go ahead and add my little layers there. And I'm also gonna add it in between the dark and the light on the cheekbone. Sorry, my fingers are probably freezing. Feels good. <laughs> right in here so in between the dark and the light we're going to apply a layer of the medium and that's what's going to blend the two together so it doesn't look cray cray 
Although we like cray cray, but you know, we don't want to. Not that cray. <laughs> Not like the lines all over mm-hmm. the face. So right in between there. We're also going to do in between the rainbow. So right in between the dark and the light areas of the forehead, we're going to apply this medium tone. And lastly, on the sides of the nose, we see two brown lines on the sides of the nose. I want to cover that up and make it a little softer. So I'm going to use my medium color there as well. And this is also going to prevent oil buildup on the nose area because we're putting a lot of powder here. Okay. Now, any other areas that you want to soften, if there's an area that's too dark, you can always use the medium to soften it up. If there's an area that's too white, you can use this to soften that up as well. So sometimes I like to add a little bit more medium right in here, closer to the mouth, just so that it doesn't look too, too dark um, with the contour line going all the way down. So now the face is like totally photoshopped. Everything's looking really Barbie. I love it. And it's starting to look a little bit more normal because we use that medium color as our tool to erase the edges. It blurs the edges so that it marries together and, you know, overlaps. So as you guys can see, if you guys are new here, I mean, my DYFL army already knows this. But now that you're a part of the DYFL army, you will also know that I don't blend. It's really not about blending. For me, it's about overlapping color. It's about making sure that every color marries into the next color without wiping, wiping, and blending. So when you're marrying them together, you create this very nice gradient of light to dark or dark to light. So without blending, you're actually cutting your time and you're creating a much more flawless canvas because you haven't wiped anything off. You have that full coverage from beginning to the end. So now that the face is technically done, we can now do some of the detailed stuff. We're gonna add shimmer, give her that JLo glow. We're gonna add blush, and then we can finally move on to the eyebrows and the eyes. So uh, for the shimmer, I'm gonna use Girlactic and Natural. And I'm gonna use it with my fingers. I like to use my hands for this because I just like it. It's going to go on a lot smoother. So we're going to face a little bit this way. And what I'm doing is I'm just using my fingertip to draw this line of shine. And then I'm going to roll it into the skin very lightly. Like I'm barely touching her. I'm just touching her like a, a feather or something. Mm-hmm. And I'm just rolling it so that you can't really tell where it starts and ends. And then with a clean finger, you could always blend edges if you need to. And now she has this beautifully highlighted cheekbone. And because I used my fingers, I was able to glide it a lot smoother and no fallout because with the brush, sometimes it kind of goes in other areas. You get a little speckly on the rest of the face and I don't really want that. So with this, you're actually just keeping it in the zones that you want it. We're gonna do the same on this side and we're gonna roll it. And with a clean finger, Erase the edges. Okay. Ooh. And now we're going to do the same thing for the bridge of the nose. And with a clean finger, just blend it. So now we have a little bit of highlight there. And then lastly, a little bit over the brows. A little bit on the cupid's bow and we're gonna highlight the chin. And bam, now she has the JLo glow. It took like 10 seconds and we didn't even need a brush. Just do it with your finger. Now that that's done, we're ready for blush. We're gonna do a nude lip on her, so I'm gonna do kind of a nudie blush. I know you guys are so mad at me for using blushes that are discontinued, but I kind of have to because I love them. This color is called Buff from MAC. It's just a really nice, like, nude blush. And um, this one here. And you can still buy it on eBay. I still buy it on eBay. You just have to kind of buy it from a reputable seller, though. So make sure it's not, like, a fake. Uh, But it's a gorgeous color. So I'm just going to use it. If you guys have any suggestions on something that's similar, please let us know. 
and I'm just going to apply it right in between the contour and the highlight. Ta-da! It just gives a little bit of color. We don't need a whole lot because we are going to do a nude lip later. So right in between the contour and the highlight, really getting that color to stick on her so that it doesn't fade throughout the day. And now our blush is on. So now we're done with face, yay! Now we can concentrate on the fun stuff, the eyebrows, the smoky eyes, the beauty beauty. And the first thing I'm gonna do is do the eyeshadow base. This time I'm going to be using my Pro Pencil from Anastasia. This is an eyeshadow base and you can clean around the eyebrows with it and all that good stuff. This is base number one. Go ahead and close your eyes. I'm gonna use this all up under her brow. And I'm gonna fill in her whole eye with it. Under the brow. And the whole eye. And I'm also going to blend it with that same lovely concealer brush that we've been using this whole time. And just rolling it down, making sure that the whole eye is saturated. Very smooth. Now that that's on, we can concentrate on the brows. So we're going to go ahead and use the Dip Brow from Anastasia Beverly Hills in taupe. And I'm going to use her brush with it. It's Anastasia Beverly Hills um, brow brush. It's an angled brow brush. So I just use a little bit of this product on the back of my hand. It's a pomade. And use the brush with it, which has a spoolie at the other end of it. And now I'm going to start with her arch. I'm going to roll down to the tail. I'm going to take small strokes above the hair just to raise it up and really peek out her arch. Of course, if you're working on a client, you want to ask them, is there any special requests you have for your brows? Because brows are such a personal thing. You can ruin your whole appointment if you screw up the brows. So always ask your client, do you want me to go thicker? Do you want me to go fuller on the top or on the bottom part? Or do you want me to extend the tail? Do you want a more arch? Ask them questions about their brows so that you don't mess that part up. And then like with Ani, I asked her last time we worked together, you know, how do you like your brows? She goes, as long as they're arched, I'm fine. So I know that I'm going to exaggerate the arch a little bit. And I'm just going to give her a nice kind of smooth, full look. What I love to do is start off with that baseline and then fill up everything above that in small little strokes. Give me an instant Botox session. <laughs> <laughs> and just make sure you're taking small strokes. I like to go really light in the beginning, so I'm always using the spoolie to just fade it out. I don't like to go too, too strong in the beginning parts. But I do like to go a little stronger towards the end and the tail. So that's all we're doing for the brow. We're also going to add a little bit of powder over that. So I'll do that in a minute. I'm going to go ahead and match up her other brow now. So again, baseline. Finish the tail. Go above on the arch, if that's what they're asking for. And little, little strokes everywhere else. Make sure that the baseline is a little bit stronger than the rest of it. And just smooth out the top. And I love to blend the beginnings. I just don't like a very heavy beginning. And there. So now um, we can work on balancing the two brows. So now that I'm seeing the brow shape, I'm seeing that this side is a little fuller than this side. So I'm gonna go back to this and start filling up 
the hair a little bit on the top. Just to create a little bit more balance. And now we can use the brow powder, also from Anastasia Beverly Hills, to create a little bit of dimension. So I like to use the Brow Pro palette for the powders. This has like literally every color in the book. And I'm gonna use a color called Dark Brown, but it's the lighter color of the dark brown, this one here. And I'm gonna use that to just add a little bit more dimension to the outer portion of the brows or the areas that look too light. So I just wanna darken up some of the little areas that don't have a whole lot of hair just so it looks like hair again. A little bit here too on the arch area. And it starts to look a little bit more like brow hairs rather than drawn on brow. And for the rest of the areas, if you have any kind of a small, not a fluffy <coughs> brush, but like I like this little brush, it's from Inglot, number 9S. I sometimes use this with a really light brow color called Blonde from the same palette, just to set like the beginnings of the brow. It kind of makes it a little blurry, a little softer, so it doesn't look too, too harsh. And so that's basically all I do for the brows. Now I can kind of go back and see if there's any areas that need some sharpening. So I go back to the Pro Pencil and I just, I can go and sharpen up the bottoms of the brows, make sure the angle is nice and clean. Always remember to blend the bottom. So I'm just gonna use my little flat eyeshadow brush. This is a the MAC shader brush. Just to smooth that out. Close yours. I'm also gonna smooth out any creases from my eyeshadow base before we get started on the shadow. So now that the brows are prepped, the eyes are prepped, we're ready for the actual eyeshadow, we're gonna start off with the Tamana palettes. This is uh, not available anymore, but you can buy the singles from Anastasia Beverly Hills website. So I'm gonna use Fresh, and I'm gonna apply it right in the brow bone. And I like to apply it pretty heavy. I like it to be very, very bold. Do the same on the other side. Again, this is a MAC shader brush. Just a flat eyeshadow brush. Most eyeshadow brush sets carry something like this. And now we're ready to add a little bit of a crease tone. So I'm gonna go in with I see which brush I used on you last time. I haven't used this set since. MAC 217. I'm gonna go in with a MAC 217 brush, which is this little baby right here, into Bengal, which is a nice caramel tone, just to start a little bit of contouring on her eyes. So basically what we did already was the highlight portion of the eyes, and now we're doing contour, which is just a crease. And I like to start on the outside and kind of slowly work my way in, roll it around, windshield wiper, however you like to blend. And it just starts to give a little bit of a shaping effect to the eye. So right now it looks flat. When you do a little bit of this, it brings the 3D back. Same for the face. When you're adding contour, makes it look three-dimensional again. Always remember to add a little bit of a flick at the end. You don't want it to like just end abruptly. You want it to kind of fade out. Okay, so now she has this lovely little shaping going on. It's gonna help us determine how dark, how light, where to go, all that stuff, the zoning. Um, this is the part that helps us guide the rest of the eye. Now that that's on, we are gonna go with the same brush and start applying something a little crazy. This part's gonna look a little nuts to you guys, but that's the whole point of the show. We're gonna use Dip Down from MAC. This is the dark brown um, eyeliner gel. 
we're going to dip in the same brush, 217, just as so. We're going to use our hand as our palette. And I'm going to start smoking out her eyes. I'm going to use this as a base so that when I go dark on her with the eyeshadow, it actually pops a lot better. So I'm starting off with this outer corner of the eye. Right in through there. It kind of creates a little bit of this uplifted shape. So make sure you're giving her a little lift. And we're going to roll it into the crease a little bit to darken that up. Alrighty. I'm going to go ahead and add a little more because I do want to go more dramatic, darker. So I'm just giving another layer of the same thing. Okay, so we have that on. We're going to do the same on the other side. It already looks good mm -hmm. without the eyeshadow. Oh crap, I keep moving this camera. Okay. Is it good? Yeah. We're going to do the same on the other side. Now I have a lot of control over my brushes only because I've been doing this for so long, but if you guys used to use a smaller brush to control it better, that's totally fine. Whatever brush you think will make you do a better job, just use that. I hate putting rules like you have to use this brush for this, or you have to use this brush for that. Like, It's really about your wrist action and how you can control it. So if you're better with smaller brushes or if you're better with fluffier brushes, you can figure that out. Okay. So now that we have these lovely dark eyes on, we are ready to start um, applying some of the eyeshadow. So we're gonna go in with, huh. We're gonna go in back with the Inglot 9S and we will use, what are we gonna use? We're gonna use chocolate from my palette. This dark, dark, dark brown right here. Just in the beginning to set it, then we're gonna use some blacks. So I'm just gonna set what we just did with chocolate. Use your fingers to blur the edges if you need to. Okay, same on the other side. Slide it on. Don't do a whole lot of brushing back and forth, otherwise it's just gonna fall all over the place. Just slide it on, let it really stick. Okay, now that that's done, we are ready to add a little bit of, um, let's see, we're gonna add custom. We will add custom, which is this color right here, it's a nice kind of a silvery tone. We'll add that with a nice flat shader brush, the same brush that we use under the brows. We're gonna add that right in the center. And it's the press and slide. For those of you who've seen my other videos, the press and slide is where you press the color on, you slide it down, and it sticks perfectly. No fallout. Press and slide. I'm going to do one more layer on this side. Looking good. Now we're ready to add a little bit of blue on the inner corner. So I'm going to go in with one of my MAC colors. Like this. We're going to use, I think it's called Moon's Reflection. Yep. Moon's Reflection. This color right here. It's a beautiful sky blue. So it's Moon's Reflection from MAC. And I'm going to dip in with the same brush. Wipe my hands, make sure nothing's on it. And I'm going to use it in the tear duct and in the inner third of the eye. 
right in there. If you guys ever see a little bit of fallout, you need to make sure that you remove it right away. With the same brush that we used to set her highlight powder, it still has a little powder on it, and that's going to help remove it right away. If you don't remove any fallout right away, it's going to eventually stick to her, and I don't want that. Same on the other eye. This is Moon's Reflection from MAC. I love this color. It's very ethereal. I haven't done blue eyeshadow in years. Oh, it's so pretty. It looks good on you. Really? I wasn't planning on doing this when we did our promo shoot, but it just kind of happened. You always see me in neutrals, right? Mm -hmm. Warm browns <laughs> and oranges. <clears throat> yup. And now, just for that little inner, inner portion, I'm going to use a hint of, with a very, very small brush, I'm going to use a hint of White Frost, also by MAC. With, what brush is this? This is the Anastasia Beverly Hills brush number 16, right in here. Look up to the ceiling. I'm just adding that right in that tear duct area. It mixes in with the blue very nicely, so it almost has a silvery effect. It just, it really pops a lot more. So now that that's done, I can go back into the crease, make sure it's nicely get blended. I'm gonna go in with um, one of my, with Bengal. Bengal from my palette. I'm just gonna refine that crease a little bit. Right on that edge. I don't wanna blend away any of the brown, I just wanna refine the edge. Just so it looks like it's blasting out. Make sure it's blended on every single area, whether it's the inner corner of the eye or the outer corner of the eye. You wanna make sure there's no harsh edges. And when I mean my blending, I mean add a medium tone to the area between the dark and the light so it looks blended. I don't mean wipe off the dark area until it's blended. You're supposed to add a medium tone and make it look blended without wiping anything off. So now that it's all perfected, we're ready for the eyeliner on the bottom. So what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna go back to the dark brown gel liner first with this little Sonia Koshuk brush number 122. And look up to the ceiling. I'm gonna add this liner underneath. Like a smoky brown. Give it a nice angle because remember in the picture I did a little bit of a cat eye on her, which means that it dips down a little bit. So while she's looking up, I'm gonna just carefully go under that blue part so it has a little dip down. Same thing on the other side, let it dip on a low angle. Now to prevent the eyes from looking too close together, you don't wanna to go too long with this line. Just give it a little bit of a dip. It doesn't have to be so dramatic. Now that that's done, we're ready for the black part of the eyeliner. This is my favorite, Inglot number 77 eyeliner. And we're going to use it with the Anastasia Beverly Hills number three eyeliner brush. This little buddy right here. I'm going to give it a quick spray just to get it soft. With my brush cleaner, I use uh, the Cinema Secrets Pro brush cleaner. And we're going to add a little bit of product to the brush. 
I'm going to put it on the back of my hand just so I can go back and re-wet. And go ahead and look up to the ceiling. I'm going to fill in her waterline with this. Also make sure that you're letting the color bleed over her lash line so that you're creating more of a smoky effect. So I'm just bleeding it over into that brown part of her eyeliner. I use the brown for that smoky thing just so that the black wouldn't look so harsh on the edges. Now I can use the black and just go nuts with it and it'll still look good. Look up again. You want to blink for a little bit? No, I'm fine. Yeah? Yeah. And look up. We're going to go all the way into the inner corner with this. And we're also going to trace over that cat eye. Just be really careful. This is the part where I don't expect everyone to get it right the first time they try it. It's really hard. It takes a lot of practice. It to totally it. takes years of practice mm -hmm. to get it perfect. Especially to get it even. Yeah. The hardest thing ever. Yeah. So it is pretty advanced. So if you guys want to do just with regular liner, that's totally fine. You can still create a beautiful eye without having to do this mm -hmm. part. I just like to, you know. Go wild. Hell yeah. I love going crazy. Okay. So we have the double wings. Now I'm going to sharpen up the tear duct. So go ahead and look over there. I'm just sharpening up the tear duct wing by making her look on the opposite direction. I'm going to do the same over here. She's going to look over there. And I'm just going to use that same brush to create this sharp tear duct here. If you guys get any little smudges, don't worry. There are ways to clean it up. There are ways to hide it without using eye makeup remover and Q-tips and all that stuff. That'll just make a dent oh. into your face and eye makeup. <laughs> Total dent. Yeah. <laughs> and your concealer and all the layers. No need. No need. So, if you have a little smudge, if you want to clean up any edges, go back to that same brush that we use, that really skinny brush with that same eyeshadow that's behind her and you just cover it right up and it just grabs on and looks super, super sharp. So it looks clean, it doesn't look like anything happened, no one freaks out, you don't say oops, you'd never say oops in front of your never. client. Never. Oh God. Just fix it and just shut up. do it. <laughs> no one will ever know it happened. Okay, now we're ready to set the inside of her eye with noir. I go crazy with noir eyeshadow. This is the blackest black on the market. On so I have the Beverly Hills Tamana palette, or you can just buy it by itself. And I'm going to use the MAC uh, 231 brush. Look up to the ceiling. And I'm setting the inner rim. And I'm also going to bleed over the edges. Again, setting the inner rim, bleed over the edges. And now we're going to go in with a pencil brush and we will use chocolate underneath to blend the black. Blending without blending. And now, going back to custom, to balance with the top, I'm using custom below the chocolate. So it's a total gradient of black to brown to that silvery taupe color. And it just looks, oh my god, it's so good. So I'm going to go back with that brush that we used to highlight her. And clean up any areas of the face. 
So now that whole bottom part is nice and clean, everything's done there. Now we're gonna work on the top eyeliner and then we're gonna add black to the top corners to make it really, really, really dramatic. So I'm gonna go back to that same eyeliner brush from Anastasia Beverly Hills. Going back to the same um, eyeliner, number 77 AMC gel liner from Inglot. I'm gonna take a good amount, put it on my hand here. And now we can do the top. So while the eyes are looking straight ahead, I'm gonna go ahead and draw the wings. So, I'm gonna draw one wing very carefully. Sorry if I'm covering you guys, maybe I'll have her turn over here. Draw one wing out and make sure your other one matches. So I'm gonna have you turn this way. Be very careful. So now that I have the wings on and they're the same angle, now she can close her eyes and I can pull her lid and go crazy with the rest of her eyeliner without having to risk that I'm misplacing the wing because I've already gotten the wing out of the way. Go ahead and close your eyes. So lift up and get right in there. I like to do it in little sections just to make sure I'm not like going crazy. I'm going thicker on the outer half and then I go thinner and thinner and thinner as I go my way in. Okay, open. So now she has that thin to thick line. Do you wanna just kinda go a little closer there so then the wing? Okay. Nice. And we'll do the same on the other side. Close your eyes. We're gonna start in one area. Go a little thick on that outer portion and go thinner and thinner and thinner as we work our way in. Make sure you're lifting her lid so you can get really close to her lash base. Otherwise you're risking a very fatty, fatty line. And then just connect your wing to the liner, open. And now look down in that direction. I'm just gonna go ahead and connect her tear duct area. And close again. Any areas that you need to smooth, you have to perfect it. So just take your time. Mm -hmm. And there we go. Now we have both wings on, everything's looking very exotic. Now we're ready to really smokeify her and add the black eyeshadow to the top. The reason why I didn't go straight to black is because I like that build up. It looks like it's more blended when you're building it up. So I'm gonna go in with my little Morphe brush number M506, this little tiny tapered guy. Dip right into the Noir eyeshadow. And I'm gonna have you turn a little bit. Open your eyes. So where her fold meets her wing, I'm just gonna make a little dot. And that's where I'm gonna smoke her out the most. That's where I need my darkest area to be. Not all up in the crease. I really want it to be right in there. So now that I've made my dot, she can close her eyes or look wherever she's comfortable. And I can just shove this little guy in there and build the black. I'm gonna let it trail off and disappear into the crease. I don't want it to go too high. And I'm gonna let it trail off and go into the wing because I don't want it to go too far out and too thick. But that darkest part remains on that area where her fold meets the wing. Everything else is blasted out. I wanna build a little more. Right in here. And whatever's left on the brush, if you feel like bringing it in, go ahead and bring it in. You wanna darken up the eye? Go for it. And that 
is how I get that dark corner without it getting all over the place and looking like a huge black eye. So you see the difference between this one and then you see the difference between that one. That's a softer smoky eye and this is a darker smoky eye. Granted, so this is not a traditional smoky eye where it's dark all over. This is definitely, um, you know, another version of a smoky eye. It's just smoky on the outer half. So we're going to do the same thing where the fold meets the wing. That's where I'm really digging in here. And then everything else is faded. Just make sure that part's the darkest. And very light fading on the edges. Use your finger if you need to. And we have that really, really dark look. I might go a little heavier here. All right. So now the eyeshadow is done. Yay. Yes. Lashes. Last time. <clears throat> Got to curl first. So when you're curling, make sure your client is looking down to the floor. You lift her skin up and you just clamp down. Do the same on the other eye. Lift the lid up. Get right in. Is this okay? Mm -hmm. Clamp down. Give her a second to blink. And then we're going to go ahead and add mascara to the bottom lashes first and then the tops. Look up all the way. This is my favorite mascara. You guys in my DYFL army already know it is Hypnostrama Waterproof from Laco. I'm just giving it a nice thick coat. I like to use mascara straight from the wand, especially designer mascara like this, because it goes on the best when you're using the designer wand to go with it. See how it's an S wave? I don't know if you can tell. It's like a slight S curve. And that's what builds the mascara really nicely onto the lashes where the lash application wands, um, the mascara application wands are straight usually and they can't build it as full. So just to make sure that your client doesn't have any crazy eye conditions before using it. And if they do have major allergies or some condition, make sure they have their own mascara that you're gonna use. But most of my clients in LA, all the celebs, all the girls, the brides, they want the designer lash look. So they love using the original wand that it comes with. Although you didn't hear it from me because this is very much not state board. That's why I don't teach at a cosmetology school. I don't like what they teach. It's not necessarily what's done in the real world. It's just to get your license. But once you have your license, you do what you need to do to do the best job you possibly can do. Definitely. Yep. All right, bottom lashes are on. Time for the tops. We're just gonna let this dry for just a second so it doesn't transfer. Honey, it looks so good. I know. <laughs> I just Her face need is lips. perfect for this. Yeah, <laughs> lips next. <laughs> Look down. We're just gonna lift right up and just go crazy with the mascara on the top. I use my nail as a guard. <laughs> Some people use like a little cardboard or something. Yeah, I saw Michelle Fan on YouTube a long time back used a um, business card. Uh -huh. I love her. She's so cute. Yeah. She's the one that does all the crazy transformations, right? That's her uh, friend Promise. Oh, Promise. Yeah, That's Promise cool. friend's like, whoo. Yeah, she's cool. Yeah, she's amazing. I remember watching her videos when I was really young. I love her transformations. Yeah. Her Drake was crazy. I know. All right. Coat it really, really well. Okay. Now that we have that on, we're ready for the false lashes. I'm going to use Huda Beauty Lashes in Samantha. Oh, I love nail. those. <laughs> I'm so excited to use these. They're the best. They're so pretty. Okay. I'm going to measure them to make sure that they fit her eyes. 
took a Ooh. little, I think. Right. I think you're okay. Yep. I think you're good. We're going to go ahead and use the House of Lashes glue. Lay a little brush on. And make sure you're giving it a nice coat throughout. Let it get really sticky before you apply it so that it doesn't just spread all over the place. This is how cute the box is. It's Hula Beauty. <laughs> For those of you who have seen that, we have a little special surprise on the channel. Um, if you go to the members page or even the first home page, you'll see the whole lineup of classes we have going on. We're working on updating the date with Huda. Huda and I are going to do something very special for you guys. Um, and we're just trying to make sure that the trip is like going perfect with the timing that we have. So we might update the date. So just stay tuned for that so we can let you know when exactly that class is going to be. But I'm so excited. So excited. Okay. Go ahead and look down. I match center to center. I apply the outer corner and then the inner corner. And we're gonna let it really dry and set, fanning her. Make sure in case there's a little watery eyes, you're giving it a little extra time to set. And open. Ooh. Really pretty. I'm not watery, am I? In the inner corner for a little bit, but you're fine now. Okay. Yeah, very sultry and pretty. You kind of remind me of an Arab singer. I saw the comments. Is it Haifa that they said? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You have that like eye look now. Cool with the Arabic eye. <laughs> I think I think it's your makeup. It's the makeup yeah. thing. Because I don't think I've gotten that before. That's so funny. I didn't even think that, but then when I saw that comment, I was like, oh my god, you totally do. Yeah. Yeah, from like those really fancy music videos. <laughs> Their makeup is insane. Yeah. They go crazy like us. Yeah. I love, I love it. it. All right, we're going to let this lash get a little sticky so we can apply it. And then we get to do the lips and then we're done. Yay! I'm going to remove this in the meantime. So I like these lashes because it's not necessarily exactly short to long it's these lashes are pretty even throughout they're a little longer in the center and they're very wispy so it makes the eyes look more open so i love that okay we're going to apply center to center close down on the outer corner and then close in on the inner corner Make sure all of it is nicely packed and open. And there you have it. Open again. There we go. All right, so her eyes are officially done. I'm just gonna have her, yeah, look close. She knows the drill. Mm -hmm. Go to the side to side. I want you guys to make sure you have your screenshots so you know what to refer back to when you see this look so you can practice at home. It's really, really sultry. You have the pop of blue in there. It's very Arab for a smoky eye, but you don't have to do that inner tear duct thing. I just love doing that because it's like, you know, it's my thing, it's my mm -hmm. signature. But if you don't want to do it, you don't have to. It could just be a clean little line or nothing. And you could just have the blue there without any of the eyeliner there either. And it looks very nice and very wearable. So now that that's done, we're ready for the lips. And what I'm going to use is MAC Subculture along with uh, more of a brown tone. Uh, I have, gosh, I have so many randoms. I 
I'm going to use stone and subculture lip liners and mint lipstick. So first I'm going to start with subculture. I used this on her last time. Lip liner from MAC. And I'm just going to fill in most of her lips with this. Just to start giving a little bit of definition here. My top needs major definition. <laughs> it's been washed out. So I'm just going to start coloring it in, giving her a little bit of uh, color here, a little bit of uh, overline. And because this color is so light and so natural, I'm not really caring about staying in the lines. I just want to start giving her a little something. Now that this base is on, I'm going to use Stone, which I also used on her last time. And it's a very gray brown, and that's what's going to be our corner color for the ombre lip. Very taupey brown. Mm -hmm, I love this color. It's perfect for nude lips. Make sure you get the outer corner in here. Right out here too. Corner is here. Okay, now we're ready for the nude lipstick, which will be Mint from now. And the brush that I usually use for lips is the same brush I always use. Um, it is just a paintbrush from Michael's Art Supply. This is how it looks like. It's just a flat little paintbrush. And if you guys really want to know what it is, it's Low Cornell Natural Hair 270 1 quarter. That's, <laughs> <laughs> Good that's, that one. that's the name of the brush, but you can go to Michael's and find something. Or if you have whatever lip brush at home, it's no big deal. I'm not really thinking about lip brushes. Yeah. This is Myth. I'm applying it mainly on the center of the lips. And then whatever's left on my brush, I'm just going to drag it over the edges. Just a little bit. Ooh, very muted. And that's it, guys. Like, that's the whole look. Oh, I got some on the wall. Wow. Yeah. I'm obsessed. You look awesome. So this is where you take your final pictures, side to side, posing. Go ahead and whip out your cameras, do your little screenshots. I'm just going to do a little cleaning up on right here, some of the mascara. You could just literally flick it off. Smooth any areas that you need to smooth afterward, final touch-ups. It's looking really nice. Mm-hmm. I love that. Good. So as a recap, after we did the face, we went ahead and we put on the eye primer, and then we did the underbrow highlight first just to get it out of the way. Then we applied a nice medium kind of a caramel tone in the crease to get the shape started. Then we applied a dark brown gel liner with a brush to fluff on the outer half of the eye to create that smoky effect. And we set that with a dark brown eyeshadow. After that was done, we put um, a, like a silvery tone right on the lid. And then we put that blue tone right on the inner um, third of the eye and added a little bit of white frost just to make it pop a little bit more right on the tear duct. Um, we also added eyeliner on the top and the bottom. We did the wings. We added brown down here, and then we added that silvery tone right below it just to make it a perfect gradient. And lastly, we added black right on that outer corner to give it that cat eye effect and to make it very ombre. So this is like an ombre sky blue and black smoky eye. 
um, with a lot of in-between shades in there to make it perfectly blended without you wasting time blending over and over again. So you guys saw that I spend a lot of time on the face. I like to perfect the face, make it look like Barbie first. And then when the eyes are starting, it kind of just flows because once the face is done for me, I'm just like, okay, slap everything else on and it just looks good. Um, eyebrows, we just use the Anastasia Beverly Hills uh, taupe dip brow and then we just set it with a little bit of brow powder. That's pretty much it. And then the lashes, of course, Samantha by Huda Beauty, very, very pretty. And the lips was Myth from MAC. And I'm in love with this look. Me too. Very, very nice. Can't wait to take selfies. You're rocking it. <laughs> Selfie time. Thank you. So now um, I'm going to go ahead and look at some of your questions that you guys have. If there's any questions to Ani, Vanity Makeup, go ahead and tag her in those questions so we can ask those questions first. Um, and then I'll go ahead and answer the rest of the questions um, before we say bye-bye. Grab my phone here, buried under all this makeup. Okay. So, let's see here. On my latest post on Instagram, this one right here, this is where you ask your questions. For those of you who came in late, go ahead and ask your questions right in here on that latest post. So... if there's any specific ones that you need to answer first. Oh my god. Ooh, that's a lot. How long it just keeps take? going. Oh, let's talk about how long it takes to do a full glam makeup look. Mm -hmm. Okay, so Ani, how long does it take you usually when you have a client that wants like a glamorous makeup look? With a client, it usually takes me about 45 minutes. Now, she works out of a salon. Mm -hmm. So they have so a very aggressive yeah. kind of a booking calendar, right? Mm -hmm. You book every yeah. 45 minutes. Usually, every 45 or an hour, so it's definitely more fast-paced. Mm -hmm. But I think um, it also depends how fast you are as a person. Like, I talk fast, I walk fast, so in general I'm very fast, so probably even if I want to, I wouldn't be able to spend an hour unless I'm making like a little... 15 second video for Instagram, for example. But um, if I'm not doing that, usually it doesn't take me no more than 45, because I just can't. Yeah, that's yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, just what I do. I would say 45 is a very healthy amount of time. Mm -hmm. um, I spend an hour, because I love talking, like you guys know this. I talk through everything. So we just kind of chat and spend time, and I like to, you know, just, I don't work in a salon, I work from yeah. home. My clients come, or I'll go to their place and I make sure I spend, I, I book a little extra time than needed just in case they're late or in case I just love them a lot and want to talk to them more or whatever. So we just kind of have a good time. Yeah. So I usually spend about an hour or so. It's different when it's a client you know because then you yeah. just kind of catch oh up and then you talk and talk. You so. can't just do 45 minutes on a friend. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> definitely. It's you not can't. Work. Yeah, at least an hour. And then, um, Ani, what do you use to clean your brushes in between clients if you don't have enough brushes and you have to clean in between? I always use the Cinema Secrets, and I think you Me use too. the same one, right? Yeah. The, the blue liquid. Yep. Mm -hmm. Cinema Secrets is awesome because in between clients, you don't have to wait for the brushes to dry. Yeah, it just it dries, dries really right fast. And it smells really good, actually. It does. Like vanilla, Cause, kind of. Yeah, because then the clients, they're always like, oh my god, oh, your brush smells, smells so good. I'm like, it's the brush the cleaner. cleaner. Yeah, That's how you so. know it's clean. Yeah, it's amazing. It's good stuff. Um... And then there's a question here that's asking, um, where did it go? Someone said about eyeglasses. Someone was asking, when you're wearing eyeglasses or sunglasses, how do you prevent the makeup from like going away on the temple or on the side of the nose? I usually add a lot of powder to the face, and that way the glasses just kind of slide over it, doesn't actually like cake off. If you're using a lot of cream products and not enough powder over it to set it, then you're going to, it's going to wipe off if anything touches it. But with a lot of powder, your glasses will just slide right over. The powder is also going to absorb some of the sweat or the oil buildup, so you should be a lot better off. But if you're going to be out in the sun and wearing glasses and sweating and stuff like that, there's really nothing that's going to like totally prevent that. Um... How do you keep your contour look so smooth without looking too cakey? I feel when you layer too much product, it can look cakey. Um, it's about 
the product also. I use Studio Fix from MAC. Like I said in the beginning of class, the more you apply that particular powder, the smoother it looks. Where I've tried other powders where the more you apply, the more cakier or dry it looks. So you have to use the right product. Like play around with your product, see how it looks. But I've really lucked out using um, MAC Studio Fix over full coverage foundation. It just looks really flawless. Like up close, you saw Ani, like it just looked really, really good. And that's what I use usually to, um, even if I'm not wearing foundation, which I usually don't wear day to day, I use concealer and Studio Fix powder and it looks amazing. Um, let me see if there's any ones that we can answer together. How can I make the foundation last longer without looking cakey? Um, first of all, you gotta use a foundation that is a long lasting foundation. If you have a problem with keeping your foundation on, you have to use something that's long, like I use Pro Longwear on her. Um, and then of course with enough powder setting, you should be fine. The same kind of questions I get all the time, you know, how do you do this without looking cakey? It's really the right products that you're using. It's the way you're putting it on. I do thin, I do a lot of things in thin, thin layers so it doesn't build up too much. Um, what are some of your foundations that you really like to use, Ani? My favorite has to be the Estee Lauder Double Wear. The only bad thing with that is sometimes it doesn't look, um, and with flash it doesn't look like it does in person. Oh, okay. So that's the only downfall. Does it look too white? But um, yeah, it usually looks too white, even if in person it looks perfect. But what I usually do is I mix Estee Lauder Double Wear with, let's say, something like the George Armani Luminous Silk, mm -hmm. or I'll mix it with um, Makeup Forever HD, which they have a really good selection of colors, awesome. especially like yellow and olive undertones, which the Double Wear doesn't have too many. They're yeah. mostly pink. pinkish, right? Yeah. yeah. So whenever I mix that, I get a really. It's really a lot good better. Match. But I love the um, Mac Studio Fix too. I love Studio Fix. Um, let's talk about lighting. Let's talk about cameras and lighting for Instagram. I know that's a question that everybody has, so I'll answer and she'll answer. So for me, I use the um, ring light, the Diva ring light, 18 inch. I use that uh, for all my clients' pictures. I use, I'm use, i using that right in front of this camera. You can see it in this post. Um, you can get it from Stellar Lighting Systems, or you can get it from Amazon or DivaRingLight.com. There's so many types, they're all pretty much the same. You don't have to spend an arm and a leg. As long as it's 18 inch ring light, you're fine. Um, we also have a couple soft boxes here only because this is a HD streaming. We want to make sure it's the best quality that you can possibly get online. But in general, I just use the ring light and I think that the best lighting ever is natural, natural light. <laughs> yes. Going in front of a window, a window, going by a balcony. If the background behind you is a little dark, it's even better because it makes you pop better. Mm -hmm. So what I normally do, like the best lighting I've ever had is like at the doorway. You open the door, you stand right there, you get your picture in front of you from outside, and only your face is glowing because of the outside, but the background is dark because you're in a doorway, the, the light hasn't flooded the whole room. So that's my favorite, or just in front of a window. And then as far as cameras, I use the Sony Next 6. It's only available on Amazon, eBay, uh, used usually. You will get, you'll be very lucky if you can find it unused or brand new. I think um, it's, um, the, there's a new model that took one? over the Annie X6. I'm not sure of the name, but um, it's just the replacement. The replacement. Yeah, awesome. It's really similar, but I think the original Annie X6 is better. I love the Annie X6. Mm -hmm. And some of my students haven't been able to find it and they, uh, they needed a camera like right away, so they bought the replacement from Best Buy or whatever price. Mm -hmm. And they've liked it, but just make sure it has Wi-Fi. And if it doesn't have Wi-Fi, you could buy the Wi-Fi card, the memory card that has Wi-Fi, whatever technology. Mm -hmm. So you can always download the app to get Wi-Fi from your camera. But um, otherwise, if your camera has built-in Wi-Fi, that's awesome. Makes it so much easier for you. You could just send it to your phone to edit and post it on Instagram right away. As far as editing apps, I really love Facetune. I love Facetune because you can sharpen any areas that aren't too clear and you can smooth the skin if it's looking kind of like if you have a pimple here and if you have a close-up eye picture, the pimple is going to ruin your whole eye picture. Mm -hmm. You're not faking the makeup, you're just clearing up the skin around it so it's making it clearer for your audience to see what you've done as far as the, as the makeup is concerned without getting distracted by outside blemishes. So you can always smooth the skin on a pimple area. If the eyes are super red on your model, you can use the whitening tool to whiten it up. 
um, so that it's not so red. So it's really awesome. Like I'm not against editing pictures at all. Um, I would say 99.9999% of the pictures out there from beauty gurus and makeup artists are edited, mm -hmm. and that's not a bad thing. You shouldn't shun that. Um, because you have to think about the magazines and what sells, like clean images sell. Yeah. In magazines, everything's edited, our bodies are edited, our faces edited, everything is edited. But as far as makeup artists editing pictures, the only time that I think that it's not fair is if you're faking the makeup. Like if you're drawing over your makeup or blending areas that haven't been blended, mm -hmm. like that's, that's kind of that's false faking. advertising. Yeah. That's and I think your clients will probably find out <laughs> you're doing that because it's not going to look the same. In person, but as far as like light stuff, like whitening the eyes or sharpening, you know, the overall look to make it look nicer for Instagram, I think that's totally Or just acceptable. making the picture brighter or yeah. less, less green, less red. Adding color. Instagram yeah, filters are take awesome. A, yeah. Not filters, but the actual editing tools of Instagram mm -hmm. are really mm -hmm. nice. Yeah, the brightening and the warmth mm -hmm. and the coolness. I love the warmth. Yeah, I, love I, always, I the usually warmth. add warmth. I love because, adding warmth. Because yeah. usually p pictures come out a little green. Yeah. Most cameras. Yeah, so, totally. Yeah. So and then it kind of does, um, does it. What else is there? There's that one, the... There's oh, yeah, saturation. If your pictures are too orange, lower yeah. the saturation. Mm -hmm. And it won't look so crazy cartoony. Yeah. Um, Mostly bright, brightening, a little contrast. Brightening, contrast. They're all useful. Sharpening. Yeah, they're all useful. Yeah. <laughs> That's what they're there for. It's Instagram. Have fun. <laughs> okay. Is that it about that? I think that kind of covers most of the questions sure. about the um, camera stuff. Mm -hmm. Now let's answer some questions about, oh, I'm going to go to the beginning. Hmm. Okay. Oh, how do you use Inglot number 77 on the waterline without it getting on the client's contact lenses? You wear contacts. You're wearing contacts, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, I just kind of, I mean, it's always going to be uncomfortable when your clients are wearing contact lenses. If there's a little something going in, it's just, it feels like hell. But the trick is to like lower the flap so that you're not touching the lens when you're mm -hmm. drawing it and make sure your brush isn't touching the eyeball. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Keep your eye on the tip of the brush so that you're not passing the flap of the eye into the eyeball. So you're opening the flap of the eye a little bit. You're just drawing in the waterline and you're not touching her eyeball. So just be careful. You just got to go slow. Be careful. Don't just go crazy and have fun with it. You want to be very gentle Clean. and slow. Yeah. Um, how do I avoid gel eyeliner from drying? Um, they have drops that you can use in the dried up gel liner. I think most of it. Makeup Forever has one and then I think even Inglot, Inglot has, has one. one too. Yeah. Yeah. But the biggest thing is you have to close your eyeliner as soon as you scoop it out. It'll prevent it from drying too fast. Um, like makeup artists like us, like we're always doing makeup on people at, or on ourselves or whatever. So we run out of the product before it even really dries up. Mm -hmm. But if you're one of the girls out there that don't use a whole lot of the black eyeliner and then you get to the bottom half and it's already dried up and you're just like, crap, you could always use those drops that we we're just talking about to moisten it up and use it again. What is the correct angle for a winged liner? It depends on your eye shape. So if someone's eyes, or it, or it depends on their preference too. Some people like that uplifted facelift look, so I like to angle it up for that. Some people like, um, if, if someone's eye, uh, also face shape, if someone's face is very long, you want to create more width, mm -hmm. so I add wing straight, straight out rather than up because mm -hmm. you don't want to stretch the face more or the eyes more, you want to bring it out. Um, if someone's eye shape is more round, then you can extend it to make it look more slanted. If someone's eye shape is very slanted already, then you can thicken up the center to make it more round and not do much of a wing. So it's all about balancing what you don't have to create that, that right proportion of the face and you can use your wing to also do that. So in addition to the right contouring methods for your face, you can use eyeliner to change your eye shape and your face shape depending on where to go with your wing. So remember, if you go too high, it's going to look like a facelift. If you go straight out, it's going to look a little wider on the face. Um, you never really want to go down. Mm -hmm. So it's either going to be straight out or a little bit of an angle up. And I don't have like a rule of thumb for you guys, which is going to look good because like I said, it depends on the face shape. For her, I went just a little bit up. I didn't go too, too up. I just went a little bit up for that like 
just because her cheekbone, I really wanted to bring it out. So, and we talked about her liking cheekbones. So I knew, okay, if I draw the eyeliner this way, her cheekbone's gonna look more out too, so it'll look nice on her. And that comes with, of course, experience and practice too. You'll understand the more you do it, trial and error, you'll, you'll totally figure it out. We have about five more minutes of questions. Why do I apply mascara on the bottoms first? Because sometimes when I've applied it on the top first and then I have them look up to do the bottom, it gets all over the eye. Mm -hmm. So I like to do the bottoms first. There, someone's asking, do you disinfect the mascara one before putting it back in? Unfortunately, there's no way to totally disinfect it unless you spray alcohol on it, but then you're risking dilution of your product, so you just have to be very careful about that. Again, you're not hearing it from me. Um, this is just the real world. This is just how it works in the real world in LA. I mean, we're here with celebrities all the time. They all use it straight from the wand, whether it's theirs or ours or whatever it is. We know that a real mascara wand, nothing can beat it. The application is just going to be so much better. So we just are careful. If we see anything red on the eyes or if we see any issues, then we know not to, not use, to use it. Sir. Then you can use a disposable wand and mm -hmm. never double dip. Um, or you could use their own mascara. So we're just, we just have to be responsible. That's all. Oh, let's talk about finishing sprays. Do you use one? No. I don't either. I don't believe in it. I think it's fake. <laughs> yeah, I think it's, um, it's how you set the foundation and the pressed powders into the skin and the primers that you use underneath. Uh, I think you can even not use a primer, but set the foundation correctly, and that way the um, makeup's not gonna move. So if you're doing a sloppy job with applying the foundation and the powders, and then you just put spray over it thinking it's gonna make it last longer, it's not because it's all about the application. So. I 100% agree. And I've, I've tried every really brand, but I mean, I never believed in it, but just to try it,